We are in Backup Exec 2014, and I'm going to show you how to install. So first, we've mounted our ISO file, and now we're running through the installation. Any time where it takes a long time, I'll go ahead and skip ahead. So you've got some pre-installation tasks. We can go ahead and click on that first. The getting started is mostly just documentation. It's going to run a, an environment check for us. And we're doing this on a 2008 server, but you can, I understand, also do it on uh, 2012. All right, that's a couple of minutes, and now we're going to go ahead and take a look at our readiness check. Make sure there's nothing red here. Uh, warnings are fine. That won't stop anything. And we'll go ahead and click Finish. All right, now we'll go ahead and click on installation. And we've got a few options. Uh, the one we want is, the, is backup exec itself. The agent is if we're going to install on other servers that will back up from this server. And then the disaster recovery disk creation is if we need to recover from a disaster. So we'll go ahead and expand the backup exec. Click on install. Okay, that took roughly about a minute, and we're going to go ahead and accept the terms. Click Next, and we've got Typical or Custom. Let's choose a Custom. All right, so this is going to be a local installation of Backup Exec Software and Options. We don't want the console only. We want to install the whole thing, and we're not doing a remote installation. And we can also submit anonymous usage if we want. I'm going to uncheck that. We'll keep our privacy private. And now we'll go ahead and run the environment check, as you can see up here. All right, that finished, and it looks pretty much the same as our other pre-installation. So we'll go ahead and choose Next after we choose our default path. You can change that if you want for the results. And we're going to go ahead and not install any licenses. We're just going to use the default 60-day trial, which will give you a message, and that's fine. And now we can go ahead and choose various different options. So the default options are chosen here. And let's take a look at the copy server configuration is not checked by default. Enables you to copy configuration settings and login information between backup exec servers. Well, we don't have another server to do that from, so we're going to go on manage backup exec server. We're not managing other backup exec servers, so we're just going to go on from there as well. Now we do want to check the agents for applications and databases. That's if we want to back up any uh, programs and, and SQL databases, that kind of thing. We can also uh, check the box for the VMware and Hyper-V if we have any VMs we'd like to back up. And then if you want, we can also check Linux. We don't have any, so we'll just go ahead. Now, deduplication option, that requires a lot of RAM. So whatever RAM you have, half of that will be used for deduplication. And you're going to have to have a minimum amount. I believe the minimum amount is 8 gigs, but it, it could be more based on your situation. Uh, enterprise server options, central admin server, uh, we're not going to be doing that. Advanced disk-based back, uh, uh, backup options. Uh, it allows things like synthetic backups, true image restore, and off-host uh, off backup, moves backup processing from a remote computer. So that's a real nice feature to have. We're going to go ahead and check that. Exchange mailbox archiving option. This is not the same as just backing up Exchange. This is uh, an archiving option uh, that allows you to move and archive email from the Exchange archives. Uh, si uh, file system archiving option, same kind of thing, but just for files. It saves space on the file server by defining criteria that you want to archive. NDMP is another option. It uh, uses the network data management protocol, initializes and controls backups and restores on a NAS unit. Now, we don't have a NAS unit, but uh, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and check that. We'll go ahead and check that just for testing purposes. And then you have storage provisioning options, enables support for configuring, managing, and monitoring a storage array that is attached to the backup. We actually do have a storage array, so we'll go ahead and check that box and choose Next. We're going to choose the default English language, and we're going to install it on the C drive. Here's our different drives. And we'll go ahead and put in our password and choose Next. Okay, and now we're moving on to the SQL server. So you, you can choose uh, SQL that comes with 
backup exec, or if you have your own SQL instance installed, you can choose that one as well. So we'll get to that here as soon as it moves on to the next step. Okay, so we got the correct box we're looking for that we've been granted the logon rights. If that would have been an error, then we would have had a problem. All right, so we're going to go ahead and choose a local SQL Express instance. Or like I said, if you have a SQL already installed, you can go ahead and choose that. We're going to choose the Express. Now, uh, this particular version still supports tape device drivers, even though Windows Server Backup does not. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say to use these, even though we're not using a tape backup. You never know in the future if you decide you want to do that. So we'll go ahead and click uh, install. So now we're during the installation process. Now it could fail at any time during this installation process. So if it does, then of course there's a lot of troubleshooting and it will back out of the installation. So hopefully this will continue on and I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the video so you don't have to watch the entire installation. Okay, I've finished installing, and that took uh, roughly about 10 minutes on an i5 with 8 gigs of RAM. Now, one of the things we can do is run live update, view readme. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tell to just go ahead and finish. And then we're going to go ahead and close the setup, and we will attempt to launch the program. All right, so it says that we do need to restart, so that is confirmed. We'll go ahead and restart and then continue.